It is time for Main Street Magazine. Torin Christian Dotter joins us, uh, and we we talk about some of the things that uh, appear in Main Street Magazine. You can find it on the web, MainStreetMag.com, and, of course, at uh, various places throughout our tri-state region. And we say good morning to Torin. Good morning, Torin. How are you? Good morning. Well, it's a it's a Tuesday morning, and it's sunny and it's calm. <laughs> hey, that that goes a long way. That's right. We would talk uh, their graduation. Uh, everybody, the the budget votes are all set now for later on because that's been extended in New York. But let's get down to uh, basics, and that is uh, the June issue of Main Street Magazine, and uh, and I, I like the, the the cutting of the lemon on the on the cover of the magazine. Yeah, it's uh, as we talked about last time, it was kind of the idea that yeah. Libby had a similar photo, uh, not quite similar, but I saw the concept in her photo because she loves to bake. And so she does a lot of food photography that she shares, you know, with friends and, and uh, her followers. And I said to her immediately, I have the cover for us. You have to do this. And then, you know, she and I went back and forth and she tried a few things. And, uh, and when we saw that one, we're like, that's it. And it's so colorful, it's so vibrant, yet it has a deeper meaning for a lot of us, uh, most of us nowadays. And uh, so our whole th- kind of the, the issue went off of the theme of that. Let's make some lemonade out of the situation that we find ourselves in today. All right. Uh, and lemonade it is. We'll start off. Uh, what's really important, and, and and a lot of people don't understand this here in northwest Connecticut, uh, we have uh, Gear has a transportation service for uh, for the elderly. We have uh, uh, other uh, dial-a-ride programs and everything. But uh, in, in Dutchess County, there is uh, – uh, a pretty good public transportation system, and that has re, re, returned. Uh, that is returning, which will which will help people break out of the slump. I think they're in. I hope so. Hey, every kind of bit of normalcy, if we can call it that, you know, helps just to, for the simple things of being able to get around for one. So you know, I'm I'm all for if if we can safely do it and everyone is you know safe and healthy while we do it, to uh, so that people can, as we even say, get a ride. It's interesting. Uh, the uh, there's a, a big problem in New York City with the MTA, and that is uh, they've been operating with much less operation. And now that uh, things are opening up, uh, people that work at the MTA want more protection. Um, yeah. Uh, because of course, one of the first people to die of this, if you remember, was an MTA bus driver who complained about somebody coughing near him and. Uh, a week and a half later, he was dead uh, of, of of coronavirus. So, uh, so there's there might even be a strike at the MTA. That's that's the interesting thing. They they want to keep as they want to keep the cars as empty as possible. Is what they want. But uh, I think you know we we've got a ways to go before we get you know a vaccine and if folks feel safe. You know, you just even you were talking about before before we started talking about restaurants and. I mean, some restaurants, you know, you know, do you want to go sit down next to someone even though you're six feet apart? You know, you kind of double check yourself with that. And so I'd imagine the same on public transportation. Uh, it's it's you're in close proximity and especially down the city where everyone's kind of on top of each other. But that's exactly what this virus has showed people and uh, making them think. And, you know, when it comes to your health and safety, I, I get it. You know, it's funny. My brother Mark has a house here up in uh, in uh, the Sharon West Cornwall line. At a house in South Carolina, and he's been in South Carolina for a while now. And he called me yesterday and said, uh, "Should I come up yet?" So I said, "No." <laughs> I said, why don't, you wait, "Why don't you wait till Phase Three uh, comes into effect?" And but it's funny. He says down in South Carolina, most of the restaurants have a sign up. Uh, if you are worried about COVID nineteen, uh, please you know don't come in. Um, even though they have this, they have the restrictions in effect. They want people to know that you know, hey. We've got the restrictions in effect, but use your own common sense. Whether, yeah, of course. You know, whether you want to come in or not, and that that eventually is what will 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 dictate up here. I know that's that's the same way with sign we have at the bargain barn. If you feel safe, come on in. If you don't feel safe, we understand, and we'll see you when yeah. you feel safe. Exactly. Or give you a call, and uh, you know you'll meet them at the door. All right. I want to go to your story about, uh, you could say, leading by example, and let's go to Hudson, New York, and City Hall there. Yeah, Kamal Johnson, we had featured him uh, earlier this winter, and uh, so Griffin has been in, in touch with him, and, and Kamal has been doing a lot for, for the city of Hudson and its residents. Um, and so it, it was a uh, program that he initiated there. 
I think he was based on, it had taken place somewhere else, but um, he brought it to Hudson where, you know, take five minutes and check on a neighbor, a friend, um, something to that effect, just to check in with people who may not have a lot of people or who, you know, it's nice, it's just nice to check on, on your neighbor or, you know, a family member or a friend. And uh, it really has resonated up there. And I hope it, it spreads further in, to other towns and cities. You know, you've also online got an interesting article about Le, Le Bon's, your hometown market. And what most people don't realize, there is a there is a, a, a point in this article where in the early stages of COVID-19 crisis, Le bon's customers were more concerned in finding generic versions of products such as toilet paper and bleach. At that time, Le bon's, uh, business surged 300%. I was shocked when I, well, shocked and not shocked when I saw the percentage, yeah. but, you know, Ian did a great piece with them. And uh, just, just to put in perspective how certain, you know, businesses in our area have needed to respond, and Le Bon's is certainly one of those being, you know, the essential business that they are. Uh, and that piece is also in our printed magazine. But that statistic I thought was quite interesting. And the other thing that really took me with that article was how the the town of Salisbury worked with them and you know they had refrigeration units outside and just to keep you know our our community you know in supply of the the, the foods and the, the you know stuffs that they need you know they were one of the first ones and I'm not only talking about in our immediate area but in the northwest corner of Connecticut entirely uh, to put up heavy plastic protection for their employees uh, to put uh, temperature and to limit the people amount of people going into store yes. and to yep. what you could buy they did everything the right way earlier than everybody else and then they even closed uh, they're open again now but they closed on sundays for about i think a month and a half or almost two months so all their employees could have one full day of rest they really did it right at Lebon's. i think they set the standard for uh you know whether or not other stores look to them or not or knew of them but i i you know i've heard since this thing started, how Le Bon's has just led by example and, and took the, the steps, you know, and they were sometimes, you know, with the, the virus, it was days, every day was changing, but I felt like they were usually a week ahead of the curve. Yeah, they were. They did an amazing job. So that's a nice article that people will find online. And your, your writer, C.B. Wismar, must be crying a little bit because the arts have been so greatly affected uh, <laughs> in our tri-state area. Really, I mean, there are some things going on, but it, it really has been a whitewash uh for what what might what might have been this summer oh my goodness See, well so cb always has in our printed magazine you know an artist profile as well as you know he calls it backstage and uh online he had been doing film reviews and he did a lot last fall and leading up to the oscars and so when this all happened we were like oh shoot you know what's going to happen to the whole you know artistic community and our artistic friends and uh so he actually just wrote a, a fairly long piece that we put online because of the timely nature of it about um, some of the venues, um, whether it be, you know, theater production or, or you know, in that realm, music and otherwise, um, what's happening with them this summer. And um, some have just flat out canceled their seasons. Others are trying to find alternative ways to, um, you know, support their dancers or musicians etc as well as bring their craft to um the, the local community that you know usually relies on them for their their creations and um so and as for like the film reviews you know cb has been doing some um like the movie house of millerton yeah. has been offering virtual basically screenings and so cb has started to do some of those um, but it's just, it's not the same. And I know that, and that's kind of sad to say, but even though some have pivoted and you you can still get access to them, you know, it's just seeing, you know, a dance performance live and being in the, in the place that it's created. And, and, and it's just, you're missing a certain element in my opinion, but you know, maybe they can find some different way of performing it or showing it or sharing it. Um, I hope so. Or maybe by the end of the summer we can, in some capacity, you know, get back to it. Um, you know, maybe sitting out on the, the lawn at Tanglewood with 10 feet of, between blankets or something. I don't know, but I hope that's the case. You know, Jill Goodman always says there's a difference of uh, seeing a, a beautiful art picture uh, online and uh, and, uh, and, and, a, and a HD picture of it, but actually going to uh, the art gallery and seeing it in person. There is that in-person presence when it comes to the arts that nothing can replace that. You can try and you can get along, but it just doesn't replace it. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, we only have a few minutes of it left, but I want to go to your editorial. What's a new normal? Uh, talk a little bit about that. It's, uh, well, let me ask you, what do you feel is the new normal? You know, I think every all of us define that a little differently. And, you know, I think we, you know, as humans, we, we like a certain routine. I mean, they always say kids thrive on routine. And so I think we've all been jilted and thrown off. And, and of course, that's just the state of world affairs. But I think we're all craving some sort of normalcy. And uh, I, I personally have felt in the last month or so when on the few occasions that I've gone out, and especially now that I'm back in my office, just being there and you know being able to walk you know down Main Street and and even though there are many people, just having that some some sort of normalcy just makes me feel better you know deep inside, and uh, you know but obviously everyone is doing it safely and you know protect themselves and you know the person they walk past, but I just feel like you know we've we've all had to define our new normal and do what we need to do. But it's still, it's such a scary thing and, you know, people are feeling isolated and I feel that, you know, as, as humans, we are social animal. We want that interaction with people. We want to talk, we want to see each other and, and, you know, being covered up. I personally find it so disturbing for the fact that, you know, I can't see a person's smile. I can't see half of their facial expression. Um, so it, it just, it, it makes me sad, but of course there's a bigger issue. People are getting sick and, and this is a very dangerous situation, but you know, when you're talking, but you know, to the average person about normalcy, these factors all play, <clears throat> excuse me, all play a, a part. All right. Well, that's just a quick look at some of the things uh, we uh, we talk on a weekly basis on a Tuesday morning. Uh, Thorin, we'll we'll check with you again and go over some more of the articles and stories in uh, Main Street Magazine uh, next week as well. Sounds good. And we're currently working on our July issue, so watch out for that one. It's our food and drink issue. All right. Take care, Thorin. Speak to you next week. Thank you. Uh, Main Street Magazine, of course, uh, uh, on Robin Hood Radio, but you can find them on the web, MainStreetMag.com, and also uh, at uh, locations for the actual edition you can hold in your hands throughout the tri-state region.